When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Hello, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me here on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Friday morning. We'll be here to talk about college planning for your kids, maybe even your grandkids. That's right, you can call in at 436-ME-TV, option 11. Back in a moment. <music> Back here on the program on Connect With Me on this Friday morning, of course, and uh, the weekend is upon us already. And how about the NBA game last night? We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, you're watching us live on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6 as usual, and now 13.1. That's live between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning here on Me TV. Hey, my friends, if you'd like to catch the replay, you are more than welcome. 2 o'clock uh, later today at 13.6 YouTube and 8 o'clock tonight on Biz TV, that would be 4.6 on your dial. Then you can check us out on YouTube after that, and you can also check out the uh, the Twitter account at John Malos Me TV. And so I want to talk a little bit about the NBA playoffs uh, last night. Of course, Game One of the NBA Finals, and uh, LeBron James and company 44 points, of course. Uh, but not enough to beat the Golden State Warriors in overtime. Uh, Stephon Curry had a little bit of an off night, only 26 points, but still enough to beat the Cleveland Cavs in game number one. Game two is Sunday night. On Monday, Dennis Hart's going to be here. We might break down a little bit about what happened in uh, the first two games. It'll be played, of course, at Oracle Arena at the Oakland Coliseum. And then... Um, uh, well, it's now called Oracle, but I still call it the Oakland Coliseum. So anyway, game one is in the books. The Warriors win it in overtime. Congratulations to them. Can't wait for Dennis Hart here because a lot to talk about with Dennis Hart on Monday. A lot has happened uh, since the last time we talked to him. So today we're going to talk about some college planning. We did it just uh, not all that long ago. Let's see, this is June. I think we did it about three months ago with our guy Scott Carl. But we're back today again to talk about the fact that soon, if not already, you, you are paying for your kids to go to college and maybe even grandkids, who knows. I want to go to the videotape and talk about this because it is a topic of conversation around the country. How much does it cost to go to college? A lot, my friends. The average cost of tuition in this country has more than doubled, in some cases tripled in the last 30 years or so, depending on what college you're going to, of course. It, it really can be a financial burden for most families. That's why many students look to land scholarships anywhere they can, even if it means moving across the country, moving away from family or friends. Life on campus for some students can also be stressful, especially if they're on a scholarship. Playing sports or they're in a band, keeping up with their grades, trying to have a social life all packaged in one. All the while thinking, too, of what they might do when, once they graduate. How does one choose the right college? That's the $64,000 question. It should be the right fit in terms of socially, economically, certainly from an academic standpoint, and perhaps from an athletic standpoint for a lot of students, either football, baseball, basketball, tennis, golf, women's volleyball, whatever the case may be. Should one also look at the school's reputation? Hey, is it a party school? <laughs> Let's go party. Let's not study, right? Is there a, a constant turmoil on campus, like protests, like violence? Does that uh, certainly turn you away from that particular educational uh, program and focus more on uh, social issues uh, than to make uh, headlines uh, in the newspaper? All right, the other question is, 
who is there guiding you from step A to step Z? That's the question. We have someone here in the studio today, live in our studio, is Suzanne Spradling. She is an educational consultant. She charges you to come into her office where she will give you and your parents advice on how to pick the right college. In fact, going to her is almost like taking a full-time college course, it seems, but it may help you in the long run pick the right college and certainly pick the one that it fits uh, not only your financial needs but your academic needs so 436 me tv option 11 is the telephone number here hey what's the most underrated college in the state of california is it usc is it ucla is it uc riverside wrong none of the above we'll tell you when we come back in just a moment Most watched news channel in Europe. It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, oh, no. and television the Me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here on the program, my friends, on a Friday morning. So you're getting ready to send your kids out to school, or they might already be in school. Are they in high school, ready to go to college? If they're a senior in high school, hey, it's it's too late. You you should have already made that decision last year. Is that right, Suzanne? Yes, most seniors can, <laughs> but there is still time. I um, know, but time's running out. If yes. you're a senior, gosh, school's out next week, I believe, for most uh, campuses. Yes, school's out, but I mean, community college is still available, and there are some uh, colleges that are limited, but are still available for students, yeah. so yeah, but community colleges will probably be the best fit. Okay, so I kind of teased our audience a little bit, and I said, you know, if, if here in California, if, if you talk to any parent and they say, gee, where would you like your kid to go to college, maybe the first campus that comes up might be Stanford or USC. A lot of USC fans here in the Central Valley, I have no idea why, boo on the Trojans. <laughs> anyway, uh, or UCLA or San Diego State is a very popular one for them to go to as well. But the most underrated college is, you were telling me this the other day, up in Stockton. I really like uh, University of Pacific in Stockton. Roll the videotape. We have that <laughs> videotape of the UOP and of course the UOP Tigers. Okay, explain in detail from A to Z why. This is like uh, a kind of a diamond in the rough here. Uh, not a lot of students know about UOP and not a lot of families know about UOP. So Stockton being a community that doesn't draw in a lot of uh, visitors or tourists possibly, it might not be a destination location for families. I really like UOP. I really like the campus. I think the academic programs are fantastic. They have a music conservatorium for students hmm. that allows students from um, all different backgrounds to uh, experience not just music, but a lot of um, fantastic majors and professional degrees as well. Hmm. What's life like on campus at UOP? I would say it's pretty calm. I'm pretty typical college campus. They have a mixture of everything. They have just under uh, 10,000 students there, and that's undergraduate and graduate students. Mm -hmm. um, but they have all, all the bells and whistles, as I would call them, for colleges. So they have everything from the um, social fit for students, whether it's sports and um, or sororities or fraternities or clubs and activities, but they also have very strong academic programs as well. Okay, now the big question, what does it cost to go there per semester, let's say? Oh, goodness. You know, I do not have that exact information. Well, no, no, no. You yeah. have to be exact. But oh. or, or give me a give me a rough ballpark of what it might cost me if I want to send my kid there, which I don't think I will. But I mean, just I would case. hate to get, say numbers, but I would probably say closer to forty thousand per semester. No, per year. Per year. Yeah, if we were talking everything with tuition, housing. Forty thousand yeah. a year. Yeah, that's a lot. Don't of quote dough. me, but that's a, no. But, but, but I mean, it is. I mean, private ballpark. school. Yeah, it's probably within five or ten grand. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah, about. yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you're in the ballpark. Yeah. 
I'm sure. Yeah. As opposed to, say, going to Stanford, where it's going to cost how much a year? Oh, gosh. 200 grand? No, I don't know if it's that much more, but, but 100 probably closer to 120? 60 or 80. 60 would, or 80 yeah, thousand. So it's say, double. It's yeah, double. Down. I would probably say, I don't know if it's that much, but yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a lot more expensive. And then when you bring in housing and all the extra things, that's what, that was what gets a lot of families too, is that it's not just the tuition, that it's also the housing and the books and everything else that goes along with college. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. So uh, <coughs> why did you pick UOP as your school of choice that's it's, kind of a hidden secret it's just my hidden gem school it was i visited a lot of college campuses not only throughout california but also throughout the united states and when i walked onto that campus i was pleasantly surprised i loved the old buildings that had the uh, vines growing up the brick walls and the rose gardens and the campus is kind of shaped in an l and so you see the old textures and the old style, and then you turn to your left and you see beautiful buildings that are brand new state-of-the-art buildings. So yeah. it kind of gives the student the mix of um, both experiences. Does it make a difference when you apply for a job, what it says on your resume, whether it says Stanford or UOP or San Diego State, or as long as you've got that degree, does it make a bit of difference? For me, and what I tell students and what I tell their families is that where you attend college, is one line on your resume. It's what you do while you're in college that what fills your resume. So if you right. go to USC and you do nothing there, you don't aren't involved in anything, you don't do any internships, you haven't done anything to fill your resume, then all you have is a one line resume that says that you went to U USC. If you go to UOP, if you go to Chapman University, if you go to UC Riverside or UC Merced or even Fresno State, and you are involved and you get internships and you join clubs and activities, then you have a full resume. And that's what employers are looking for. They're looking at that full resume of experience. Does that make a difference, really? Having a full resume? Yeah. Yeah. No, Absolutely. Getting, getting involved with all kinds of clubs. and this Absolutely. Why, why, is that, why is that important? Employers want leaders. Employers want um, students who are going outside and learning outside of the classroom you can yeah. only learn so much from a book but if you're getting internships and real life experience i mean yeah. so many colleges have fantastic internship programs that students um aren't necessarily aware of a lot of times if i have a student that's deciding between one college or another college i say go visit the college go to the career center on campus what are they going to offer you after you uh, graduate? What are they going to offer you um, even while you're there? The best place to visit while you're touring a college campus is the alumni office. See where the alumni have gone. Who are going to be your connections when you graduate? Yeah, it's interesting. We got a full screen I want to put up <coughs> of um, the, the your choice colleges, uh, the ones that you picked, that, the ones that you, it's a <laughs> list of colleges that you picked yes. besides UOP. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's the list right there. University <coughs> of the Pacific, which is located in Stockton. We got Chapman University. That's one of your picks. Why Chapman? An another hidden gem that I think a lot of families don't recognize. It's in the city of Orange in Southern California. Um, again, not a necessarily a common place, but it has a very beautiful downtown little area that students can go to campus and then go across the street to a little coffee shop. Yeah. Um, and then you see Riverside. You can, you can look at the... Uh, you know that monitor is not on, by the way. Somebody needs to turn that on. Uh, but you got, you got, um, Ch you got UC Riverside. You got Cal Poly, Northern Arizona, Vanderbilt. You got all these schools. Mm -hmm. Why these schools? Just, uh, just list them one after the other. Though. I would say because of their, because for me those are my hidden gem schools. So UC Riverside. What is does a, UC Riverside have to offer besides a bunch of parties and drinking and? Uh, <laughs> I don't know that I could go that far. <laughs> uh, UC Riverside um, is actually, so the UCs are research-based institutions and the, um, and that's really why they were founded and they're funded is their research for students. Okay. Um, they haven't always had uh, strong business management programs. They've always been focused on business economics. Okay. UC Riverside is the um, is offering the most business programs for students. So if there's a student that wants a UC uh, experience, they want the research space, but then they also want a major in business, I always encourage UC Riverside. And what about Cal Poly? That's another party school. Well, Cal Poly Pomona 
is different than Cal Poly San Francisco. Not saying that one is uh, better than the other, but most students in the Central Valley, if we say Cal Poly, we're thinking San Luis Obispo. However, if you're in Southern California, you say Cal Poly, they think Cal Poly Pomona. I think Cal Poly Pomona is a fantastic university and a lot mm -hmm. of students um, don't take the opportunity to visit Cal Poly Pomona. It has a beautiful campus and where it's located and, and all the amazing opportunities that San Francisco would offer students as well. All right, I don't know much about Northern Arizona, nor do I know very much about Vanderbilt except for some of their, their uh, sports teams. Uh, so tell us quickly about these two. The All the colleges on the list are colleges that I've visited. So as an educational consultant, that is my number one thing is visiting yeah. schools. Um, I recently visited Northern Arizona University. And again, uh, I just really enjoyed visiting that campus. It's in Flagstaff. I think it's an easy transition for our students here in the Valley to move to uh, the Flagstaff area. There's a lot of great things going on in that community. Right. Um, what and, about Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt was an exciting one. I went to a, a professional conference in Tennessee, and I really enjoyed visiting the Vanderbilt University. And I think, I mean, they again also have fantastic programs. The reason that those two are on the list is because more of our students in California do not go away, or do not go out of state. How come? And, um, I don't. I, they don't want to leave family and friends, do they? Or they don't want to leave California. They don't want to leave California, <laughs> exactly. per se, or go that far away yes. from home. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I encourage students to have um, out-of-state colleges on their list all the time because you're going to find more opportunities out-of-state. You're going to find uh, more scholarship opportunities out-of-state. There are amazing universities on the other side of the Rockies that a lot of students don't take into consideration. Yeah. Okay. We're talking with Suzanne Spradling here. She is an educational consultant, 436 uh, MeTV, Option 11. A lot to get to here on the program. Back in just a moment. We need help to find this missing child. Hallie Cummings was seven when she went missing. She was last seen in Satsuma, Florida in February of 2009. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 11. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring Hallie Cummings home. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer, the first pulsator agitator washer, and now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. All right, back here on the program talking about sending your kids to college, and uh, let's put up a couple of full screens here. Changing of the times, I want to look at some of these. This is according to the U.S. Department of Education. I don't know, Suzanne, how accurate some of these numbers are, but uh, these are. take a look at these for yourself and, and just, just comment on what you're looking at here. Do you agree or disagree with what the Department of Education is saying? I would definitely agree. I mean, it's tricky because we're talking about the United States as a whole, so you're going to find that colleges are going to vary from all the uh, different states. But I would say yes, and, and keep in mind that the numbers that are on the screen, those are tuition rates. So we're not including room and board, and we're not including all of the right. extra, extra By the way, public well. institutions, that's 1982 and 2012. That says 201, but that's okay. We kind of know it's it's 2012. So the, 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 the big difference between um, you know the last 30 years, I mean, it hasn't gone up that much, but it has gone up significantly. This is just an average, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I guess, I guess that's how they reach this conclusion is they exactly. take an average of yeah. a lot of these colleges yes. or, or universities around the nation, right? Yes, absolutely. No, those would definitely be averages. And again... Because it would cost a lot more than that to go to Stanford or something or U USC, UCLA. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so this has got to be an average. And then we also yes. have another graphic that says cost uh, the cost for college and these are some different types of numbers uh, here according to the college board uh, the average cost of tuition and fees for 2014 2015 school year was uh, 31,000 private colleges 9,000 and uh, I, I would assume this is per semester I'm not sure look at some of these numbers here and we'll take this call go ahead caller you're on the air hi John how are you doing this morning Good. How are you? 
I'm fine. Uh, listen, I have I fund a foundation, a small thing, and give out, give out scholarships to uh, students. Most of them are in the local area. And what I'm asking of your guest is, uh, she have five or six checkpoints that I can make sure that I'm doing the right thing to steward my money, um, and just to make sure that I stretch it. To the, I don't want to waste it. Uh, yeah, not getting the best benefit out of it. So, so you're looking to stretch your money out as far as you can to send your daughter or your son to college. No, uh, only one of them currently, there's, there's five young ladies, only one of them is currently uh, a relative. And it um, doesn't have to be a relative, but I've got a, a great niece in Oklahoma that's going to be going to vet school here pretty soon, so I have to kind of budget it to make sure I can help her out. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked at the cost of, uh, what the cost of uh, uh, college was. She said 40000 for the one of the colleges up north. Um I don't know how. I mean, all these gals work. They, uh, I won't, I won't give my money to somebody who isn't willing to help themselves. So, I just, if she's got a few things she can rattle off, I'm recording the program so I can watch it later and make sure I'm just doing yeah. the best that I can to, okay. to help as many people as I can. All right. Thank you. So the question is, is that so he is offering scholarships to five or so people and so he's thinking about what it is that is important well he was trying to help his niece out but, yes. but i think the question is he was trying to stretch his money out and he wants some tips on how to do that i i, I would assume okay is, it, is that what you got out of well, that no i think i think that he's offering scholarships i'm sorry i don't know that i heard it correctly <laughs> he's offering scholarships yeah he's offering scholarships and he and he wants oh. to make sure that he's getting his his He's investing his money in these students, which is exactly what he's doing, and that's what okay. I tell students. I didn't get that out yeah. of that. It's okay. That wasn't clear to me, but, well, no, but, but maybe I wasn't uh, uh, paying close attention enough. Yeah. So anyway. No, but but what he's doing is fantastic, and, and he's investing his money into our students, and that's what I tell my students that are applying for colleges. Yeah, he wanted some that, advice from you on exactly, what to Exactly, on, on so. to make sure that he's investing his money wisely and what to look for for students. So what can you tell him? I would always tell him that the the applicant or the student that he's um, giving the scholarship to needs to be able to make sure that they're well-rounded. A lot of scholarships opportunities are given to students who have shown depth into their career path. So if a student is going to apply for a major or is going to have a major in agriculture, they want to make sure that they're doing things outside of that major, outside of the school, whether, again, they're involved in clubs and activities, to show, again, that the recipient of the scholarship is showing depth and that the money is going to good use. Okay. Caller, are you there? Oh, yes, I am. Go ahead. I'm a very good show today. Thank you. Um, a little late in the sense if you graduate from uh high school uh, like she said you should be doing this um last year one yeah. question i have or a couple questions is one is that why don't we talk more about vocational schools rather than everything leading towards college um that's that's one uh the second one is that i have to agree with her uh my daughter went throughout Ohio State uh, College in Texas, and it was considerably less expensive. Mm -hmm. And when she did graduate, she got a, a great paying job, and the job actually paid to get her a master's degree. So there's other ways to obtain funding uh, as well. Um, but, but why don't they look at vocational schools as much as a college. Okay. Yeah, that's my question. Bye. Great. Like a San Joaquin Valley College or something like that. That is a very good question. Uh, a lot of our community colleges have fantastic programs, and we are very lucky to have a variety of community colleges from the State Center Community College District, also with COS and Merced College, all within a reasonable distance for our students. Vocational program or vocational uh, and career technical education is very important and i definitely encourage students to go the two-year uh, certificate degree it depends really on and, and i spend a lot of time working with families on not only college planning but also career planning because not every student is 
destined to go to a four-year university. If a student wants to be uh, a firefighter or a police officer, if they want to be a plumber or a mechanic or a welder, we have fantastic programs that are locally. Uh, our high schools, Fresno County wide, is really building the business programs and really building the career technical education. There's a lot of exciting things that are going on now with the um, Fresno County. And I was a part of uh, working with a grant last year and I'm, I'm excited for the future for vocational education. Yeah, we're going to continue our conversation. I'll hear more about the scholarships in this uh, caller that called up uh, because, I, I, you know, if he's listening or watching this program, uh, call back because I would like to ask you my, a couple of more questions myself. Suzanne Spradling is our guest today, educational consultant. We'll get into exactly what she does and what her expertise is uh, and how much she charges. 436 MeTV, option 11. We'll be back in just a moment. Hello, I'm John Walsh. We need your help to capture this fugitive. Julio Cesar Guevara Mejia is wanted by the FBI in Sacramento for the attempted murder of a 19-year-old female in November of 2007. Police say he lured the young woman to a hotel room where he shot her three times in the chest. He could be in Palm Springs, California or Houston, Texas. Contact the FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI if you have any information. Movies on Over the Air Channel 13.3. Movies. Our name says it all. Back here with Suzanne Spradling. Geez, I want to keep wanting to call you Spalding. And I'll bet you get that all the time, don't you? All the time. All the time. It's yes. not Spalding, like no. the basketball. It's not a basketball. It is Spradling. Spradling. Right? Right. Yes. But I've, I haven't blown your name. Not yet today. No, that's okay. Not yet. <laughs> that's good. There's there's 30 minutes yes. to go. There's plenty of time. Yes. Caller, are you there? I am. Go ahead. All right. I'm the one that called in earlier with scholarships. Oh, okay. Okay. So what's your specific question to... Suzanne, that's number one. And secondly, what is it specifically that you do? Okay, well, firstly, I was, I'm trying to get information to make sure that I am stewarding the money that I do have and that I, I give to the foundation that gives out in scholarships. And what I require is when I meet somebody and I tell them they, they should submit a letter, mm -hmm. uh, an application requesting uh, assistance, I tell them, give me your educational goals. What is it you want to do? What is your plan? How, how are you going to approach your education? And then it goes, I have a three-person board, and we review those. And there aren't many that come in, but when they come in, we review those and then look at the money situation and then uh, issue just a stipend. I mean, they run from 200 to 450 a month. Uh, and then they're required to submit uh, uh, grades when they're issued by the institution that they're going to, and those have to come in uh, before the next year's scholarship starts. It runs from January to December. If they want assistance, they submit in November. We will go through the board process in November to December 15th and then reissue the, the scholarship. But, I mean, not having done it before, I just set this up about six years ago, and I want to make sure that I don't get 20 years into this and say, oh, I should have done that. So you're looking for Suzanne to, to, to give you advice on, on what specifically? I'm not sure. Uh, what should I be looking for to make sure that the money is being spent for? I, I don't put any restrictions on the, I tell the, the uh, scholarship recipients, Use this money however you see fit, whether you buy books, you pay parking fees, you, it helps you with your tuition, oh, I see. you pay your rent, you buy your food. I don't care. You're going to school. You have to learn to be an adult and spend the money you have in the best way possible. You, you, wanna, to you, you want some advice on how to make sure that money is being spent wisely by the students, right? Uh, uh, 
you've heard what I've said. Is there anything you think I should be doing that I haven't mentioned? No, I think that you're doing fantastic. I think that you're doing good, encouraging students to sort through their educational goals and what their plans are. I think that that's perfect. Should um, the students be getting back to him as to where they spent that money and how they spent it or what? Uh, they can. I mean, in, in some scholarships, they, they do require that and not all of them do. I think that if you find a student who has built um, a resume for themselves in high school in terms of, of showing depth, and the, I keep going back to that because it's not just colleges that are looking for it, it's scholarship um, you yeah. know, committees but that are looking giving, for it. if he's giving, let's say, I'm just going to use this as an yeah. example, if he's giving a student 500 bucks a month for tuition mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. for, at Fresno State, let's say, for example, does he have a right to know where that money is going or... That's a great question. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And like I said, there are some scholarships that you do have to go back and that you do have to do a follow-up. Itemized uh, version of yeah, what, where you it do went? Yeah, you do have to, have to do some sort of follow-up. But yeah. ideally, I mean, if you can... How much should he pressure these students to do that? Well, ideally, if you can sort through your, your applicants and just, find Just maybe say ones. one of the requirements would be is to, you know, get back to me quarterly as to where all the money's going and all that. Is that is that a fair assessment? Or? Well, absolutely. Well, and it, it's also exciting. I mean, if, if he's investing in these students, it's exciting to find out where the students have gone and what they're doing. Right. And, and so you want to make sure they're being responsible absolutely, as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I would right. even encourage even high school students right now that have received scholarships from foundations like this. So you'll always right. want to send the, the follow-up thank you note, but it doesn't hurt to go back and after the end yeah. of the first year and say, you know, again, thank you for the money and this is what I've been doing. Okay. So I said you're an educational consultant. What is it specifically that you do? So as an educational consultant, I work, I'm a private, um, I run a private practice and I work with high school students and their families. I also work with community college students on career and college planning. So much like- What does that entail specifically? I'll start as early as the ninth grade with students and uh, we'll do career planning and we'll do career personality assessments. We'll look at careers, we'll look at majors that fit that career, we'll look at colleges. Uh, I help them with um, building their summer activities and what it is that they're going to do. Basically what I do is I take apart the college application and I pull it apart piece by piece. And so that way a student when they sit down in August before their senior year to complete their college applications, they will have every element of the college application complete. And so when it comes time to actually fill out the application, they'll be ready to go. And it, there won't be any surprises or any shocking things going on. So. We start that in the freshman and sophomore year. We do a lot of career planning with students. Starting in January of their junior year, I always tell families that the student and I are now going to be best friends because we're going to meet often and we're going to start really finalizing and fine tuning that resume. We're going to start with the personal statement process. The juniors that I'm working with right now are already writing their personal statements, whereas many students don't write their personal statements till the day that they start writing or start completing their college applications. So I want students to make sure that each element of the college application is complete and to the best of their ability. I also uh, run a very family oriented practice. I want mom and dad on board the whole way. I don't want it to be a shock as to where they're applying or where they're gonna be attending college. But do you help them with college planning like money? I wouldn't say that I not do. Not so much. Huh? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say that I do any financial planning. I'm not a financial advisor okay. whatsoever. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you help them choose the right college Absolutely. that will fit their budget. Absolutely. So I use a program that's called the College Affordability Shaper, and it's a, one of the elements okay. that's on the the portal that I use and that I have students use. And I start that early on. I start that in their freshman year, and I have students uh, and families go on there and put in their income, academic fit, social fit, and financial fit equal a good college fit. Right. Not a party fit, but a... <laughs> party fit. <laughs> All right. I, I keep going back to that because yes. I see what's going on in colleges today. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. You know, it's very important to start planning ahead for college, you know, with your kids. I have a granddaughter that's graduating tomorrow in Texas, and I have a grandson that's graduating here in Fresno on Wednesday, and they have both registered already for college. Mm -hmm. So apparently my daughters have done something okay and good because they were always on top of, you know, their, uh, uh, what is it, homework and make sure that they were doing everything right. So they're, 
they're going to start a pretty good, you know, starting college. Do you think it's it's good to start, you know, planning ahead of time? Absolutely. You have to start planning ahead of time. So, you know, starting as How early. How far ahead? Um, well, now with a lot of students taking high school courses in the seventh and eighth grade, it's not too early to start in junior high. I mean, I, I talk to students um, even in elementary schools about planning for college. The idea of going to college is something that is good to instill in students, the idea of continuing their education. So, I mean, I've worked in public universities. I've worked in public high schools. Where'd you work? What public university did I you? I worked at Cal State Long Beach. Okay. Where I graduated, I worked as an undergraduate, and I party graduated school. there. No. <laughs> <laughs> All the Cal Poly schools are party no. schools. No. Yes, they are. No. They're not? I don't agree. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, and as I said. Um, That's where my son wants to go. He wants to go to one of the Cal Poly or the UC schools. That's, yes. Those are party. No, they're only party schools if you're at the party. When I think of Cal Poly or UC schools, I think of Animal House, that no. movie. No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. There's a lot more to college than just partying. Okay. Yes. And as the president um, of Cal State Long Beach said, if all you do is <laughs> go to college, then you're not getting, or go to class every day, then you're not getting the full college experience. So meaning, it, meaning you have to do everything. You have to experience everything. <laughs> I'm not encouraging. Don't encourage I'm anybody. not encouraging, but it's important. It's important for students to get the full experience. Oh, my God. So. I think when my kids go off to college, I'll be <laughs> constantly on the phone. Why aren't they answering the phone? They're not answering the phone. Where are they? <laughs> yes, no. All right. Uh, so, hey, let's go to an email question here before we go to break. Um, can your guest explain the fundme.com website? I have no idea what that is. Do you? If not, let's move on. Well, the fundme websites, aren't those the... I don't know. I think I they're the ones on that, the, that you can fund anything. It's not just a college education. Okay. I think let's they move can, on. Yeah. Not, not important. What size nest egg will I need to put my kid in college in four years? Oh, wow. I mean, that's... <laughs> That's that is a, a million that's, dollars. That's a million. Well, uh, I think it depends on the college university that the, yeah. the student's going to. I mean, it's going to be different if you want to go to Fresno 100%. State as opposed to Stanford or UOP. Or or if you're going to go out of state, you know, if you're going to stay home or um, and the students that's can too live general at home. A so, question, probably. Yeah, but uh, definitely connecting with your financial planner is very important. Uh, and there's a lot of great. And here's another. Uh, I mean, this is obviously very subjective uh, opinion on, on the answer to this question and that is for scholarship consideration what sport should I steer my fourth grader towards very subjective I mean for girls it's going to be different for boys for boys it's going to be different for girls right absolutely uh, having said that I am uh, I 100% encourage families to while both of my children are athletes and while I myself believe that my children are going to be uh, NHL players in their futures the reality Don't bank on the it. reality of it is is not is not very high Don't so hold your breath I, I'm not holding my breath so having <laughs> said that I encourage student, families to bank on academic scholarships right because if anything happens to your little athlete in college and they break their but, arm or break their not, leg it, it has nothing to do with that though susan it has to do with there's it, 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 the cream of the crop is 100 percent absolutely okay, how much how much of that talent gets up oh, there and goes to college absolutely. and then goes on to play, say, Major League Baseball, oh. pro football, pro basketball? Oh, probably less than a percent. It's, it's less, less than, than a percent. Less than a percent. For example, my son yes. wants to pitch in high school yeah. next year. Uh -huh. Okay. What are the, the odds that he's going to pitch in college or perhaps the minor leagues or absolutely. major leagues? Probably yeah. slim to oh, none. Absolutely. So, but if, so but if you your son. So no parent can bank on that. No, but then that's why I say what you can bank on. Our academic scholarships. Yeah, that you always. Can. You can always back on bank on yeah. academic scholarships. And what I also tell families is, and so for your son, if he is both academically excels and he excels athletically, a yeah. college is, and they have their college is choosing between two players, one's athletic and academic, one's just athletic. They are always going to choose the one that's academic and athletic. Colleges want scholar athletes. Yeah, I was a great pitcher when I was a teenager. <laughs> Look where I am now. <laughs> 
That didn't work out too good, did it? <laughs> so yes. don't bank on that athletic ability, my friends. It may not take you anywhere. You got to bank on yeah. on uh, Ac academics. Ac academics, not Always. athletics. Yes. Four three six. Always. Me TV option eleven. A lot of time left here with Suzanne Spradling. She is an educational consultant. Back in just a moment. for Whirlpool innovation and quality. Who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Back here on the program, encouraging everyone to go to Chico, right to college. Chico State, right? No. Chico's, Chico's a fantastic university. For partying. And <laughs> That's academic, what I've heard. And academics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, you're blushing now. You're oh, blushing. Gosh. You did a little partying yourself yes. there in, high, in uh, college, didn't you? A little bit? Come on. Outside of my academics, and I work uh, working as well. Again, full experience. We shouldn't joke about that it's because you know what happens experience. during spring break. Every full experience. Crazy always happens. It only happens once, and then you never go back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you charge to have some family come in and talk to you about academics and choosing the right college and starting early? So do you? Tr so let's say you tr you start working with a uh, with a kid um, in middle school. You want to track them all the way until that maybe they're a senior in high school. How much do you charge? Everything. Oh, so I do have a comprehensive package for families, yeah. and that total price runs right around three thousand dollars from start to finish. From start to finish. Okay. And, and Is I'm, that reasonable? Do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. With the amount of hours that I'm working with students and their families, and I'm a resource that's available 24-7 um, on holidays, weekends, uh, nights. Yeah. It's a when families kind of break down the payments and, and they will they'll pay all throughout their high school. Um, do, do you find that some kids I mean, and and this is a fair question that kids, they get out of high school, they go to college and they just can't hack it academic. They have a meltdown because of all the workload, the social life, this, yes. that. It's just, you know, if they're working part-time, yes. uh, do they just have a total meltdown? They can't handle it. Absolutely. Uh, you, you find that to be true? Oh, absolutely. Yes, definitely. There is uh, a colleague that I had just started working with, and he is fantastic at helping with students. Yeah. And that's something that I can't say that I that I'm able to spend a lot of time on is that transition. So there's a lot of great programs, a lot of great opportunities for students to to yeah. get that connection. It's almost like a summer bridge type program yeah. for students. So caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Oh hell, I'm um, I'm wanting to get back into college, and so I need. I'd like to have her phone number or for consultation. And um, how and old are you? I'm 55 years old. Okay. Um, where is it that you're planning on going to school? Okay, I have a, uh, a I used to have a scholarship, a scholarship at Stanford University, mm -hmm. which I I ended up uh, going to CMS and then Fresno State a little bit, and on the side of um, Four C's, right there. It used to be called Four C's. Hill College there in Fresno. Mm -hmm. I, I I got a, a social degree there uh, on what well, was business uh, science. But those that, that's my my background. During that time, I was driving a truck. I never did go to Stanford. I don't know if my scholarship is still available, but still, I I, I want to go back because I drove a truck for thirty five years. 
And now I I I, I realize I went, I wish I would have finished my education instead of okay. driving a truck. You want to give your phone number out there? Uh... Yeah, that's fine. I would also, I mean, I can en encourage you now. What I would truly encourage for you to do right now is to connect with your local community college, whether it's Fresno City College or Clovis Community College or COS or whatever okay. the community college is, and then start the classes there and meet with a counselor there. What I don't know that I would be able to help you a lot because my expertise aren't necessarily in the adult reentry programs because there's a lot of uh, pathways that okay. students can go. So it's a little trickier in that. I would always encourage students um, in your situation to connect with the the college that you community looked. college absolutely yeah, okay. yeah. Or, or even even Fresno State has really good um, counselors there in the adult reentry programs. Do you get that, sir? So that's what. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so you're not. You, you couldn't help me with that finding somebody like that, could you, or no? Uh I could, but that I was. I, what I would say would be, you'd want to find the adult reentry programs at Fresno State or Fresno City College. Okay, is what you're looking for. How about Fresno Pacific? Uh, them as well. They have. It's uh, pretty much they all their. They would call them adult reentry programs. Fresno Pacific has fantastic counselors as well for them, too. And they would be able to sort through all of the college courses that you've taken and how those would work into meeting the requirements at their specific college and university uh, if the course is transferred over. I live in Lemoore, so and uh, I'm recovering from uh, a car accident, which um, I got hit while riding a bicycle. Okay. Okay. Are you satisfied with the answer, though? Is that is it? I mean, seek out a community college, or yeah. maybe Fresno West, State has West a reentry program. West Hills has a fantastic program. West when I met the Tuesday counselor, I actually saw her. I thought it'd be nice to have her number and that she could help lead me and guide me to the right person. But yeah, um, I'm kind of challenged right now because of my situation. So okay. I, yeah. I just basically need help from somebody who can kind of help me All right. get, get in touch with somebody like that. All right. Be glad to uh, put you in touch with Suzanne. And do you want, for any of our viewers that want to get in touch with you for your services, uh, the number is what? 559-978-4854. Okay. Say that slowly one more time. 559-978-4854. Okay, 978-4854 if you want to contact Suzanne and, um, you know, hire her or uh, ask her advice. You want her services on where to go in terms of college. If you want to be, you know, go with that adult uh, reentry program or you are sending your kids or grandkids. It's a big, big decision. 436, Me TV, option 11. We're back in a moment. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Swab. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. MeTV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Dr. TV on Over the Air Channel 13.9. We need help to find this missing child. Erica Parsons was 13 when she disappeared. She was last seen in Salisbury, North Carolina in November of 2011. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 16. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1 800 The Lost. That's 1 800 843 Five six seven eight. Back here on the program with Suzanne Spradling, and she is an educational consultant. Caller, are you there? Go ahead. Yes, John. I want to ask Suzanne uh, about the 
uh, the private junior college, like you mentioned a while ago, San Joaquin Valley College, yeah. and ITT Tech. If you want to, uh, you're an older one, or you want to get, you don't have the money to go to big college. Does she recommend these? Uh, I hear that they're pretty good. A couple of them is, um, I heard different. I noticed one of them just went out of business. But what does Suzanne think of it? For a student who is an adult reentry student or who may have been in a career and is looking to go back to school and maybe wants to focus or a specialty, I think those are fantastic colleges and options for, for those types of students. For uh, a recent high school graduate, I wouldn't recommend them uh, because I don't feel like the student's going to get the full college experience. It's a tricky situation because I think that they are a good fit for some students, but not for the majority of students. We have fantastic programs at our local community colleges, vocational programs that the students will get a great education and a great experience right. if they just go to our local community colleges for okay. a lot cheaper. Let's uh, roll the videotape of um, Chapman College because they, they, this is one that you visited and the one that you like. We've already seen UOP and I'll ask you a little bit of, of uh, ask you some questions about a little bit about the campus and um, actually, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, is this Chapman College? Yes. University, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can continue here uh, <laughs> along the same path. Okay. You say academic fit, social fit, financial fit. What about some of the career planning services that you have? You need to, uh, you say, uh, at least on your website, that you've got to do the proper career planning, which is what? Like, take us through steps one through four or one through five. For career planning? Yeah. What would be the first five steps that you do? Well, what I start out with students is doing a personality assessment. And so we do the Myers-Briggs assessment. And that's when we start looking at careers that are going to be a good fit for the student's personality. Now, a lot of times students are going to look at that list and they might not find the career that they've always dreamed of having. Mm -hmm. um, so at that case, then we kind of look into... Uh, maybe the reasons why their dream career isn't on there, maybe why it's not the best fit for them. So there's a lot of elements. So career planning as far as taking in the personality assessments and seeing what's available to them. But then I also encourage job shadowing, mentoring, internship opportunities. If a student really wants to be a doctor or a nurse or an accountant, I would encourage them to spend a day with somebody in that career field to really see what it is that they do. Okay, uh, you go through this day one through four. You go career exploration, uh, college exploration, yes. personal statement, college application. What is all that about? I'm excited that you found that, actually. That is something that I'm starting this summer. It's brand new. It's the oh. Senior Express Boot Camp okay. that I'm offering. So for a lot of my families, what I do is I'll start with them as early as their freshman and sophomore year. But if there's families out there that their student is... Um, just finishing up their junior year of high school and they really haven't started the college planning or application process. I'm offering a four day boot camp. It's at um, a, a reduced price, but it's gonna- What does it cost? This one, I believe, is at is nine seventy five, and it's nine hundred nine hundred, and it's okay. well worth the price because when the student is done on day four, we're actually starting college applications. Day four right. ends on August first. Right. Nine hundred and seventy five dollars for this uh, senior uh, express boot camp. And uh, yes. caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I, I'm calling back again because I didn't know that you you had. Uh, um, my line had been cut off. I still had my phone on mute when you given out that number. Could you please give that number out again? Yeah, it's 978-4854. 978-4854. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is that caller gone? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, we're running smooth as a... <laughs> Smooth as a Titanic here today. 
<laughs> anyway, um, how much time left in the program? Two minutes? Thank God, it's almost over. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not for you, but I mean, just all the technical no, stuff. No, it's all right. good. All right. Okay. Um, okay. I just come. I'm confused as to where I'm going because I don't know what to. Um, what's going to come up next? But okay, you talk about learning strengths and weaknesses. Yes. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about that. I think it's how, how important is it to know your strength. One hundred percent, very okay. important. So we call All them right. strengths and blind spots. So oh, okay. We don't call them weaknesses. Oh, we call you call them, them a blind, them spot. blind spot. <laughs> oh, blind spot. Yes. No. I, I think it's important. I think it's important for students to, and that's what the personality assessment does. Is it is it highlights their strengths and then also their blind spots. Okay. Because students need to be aware of those things, and a lot of times those blind spots turn into fantastic personal statements on a college application or even a scholarship application. Can someone get by nowadays without an education and get something decent? I mean, you know, my, you know. My kids have brought this up. They they say that, um, you know, Bill Gates was a terrible student in school. Steve Jobs, who sadly passed away, I don't even think he finished school. He dropped out. Uh, became a they both they're both multi billionaires, uh, or at least Steve Jobs was before he passed away. So, I mean, are these good role models when students look at people like like that and they didn't finish and they were good students? Uh, what does that say? I would say that those are two people out of millions <laughs> that may have not have gotten an education. Education is important, 100%. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, Students right? Students have to get some sort of education after high school, whether it's a certificate, whether it's a degree, an associate's degree, whether they're going into the military and they're learning a skill. Students have to do something after high school. They have yeah. to. Even if it's a vo vocational school, right? Absolutely. Anything. I encourage students to do anything after high school. Have an educational plan. Continue your educational journey for students. They have to do something. Uh, when, when a student looks at their parents and they're living in a nice house and they realize that their parents didn't get education so they don't need to, times have changed. It's not the same anymore. And uh, yeah. to uh, be able to afford... Um, a nice lifestyle you have to have some sort of education because yeah. the more education you have the more money that you're gonna make. Hey Starbucks offering free uh, scholarships over at Stanford there if you go to work. <laughs> really? Have you heard about that? I have not heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> if your family so, makes under a hundred grand a year though. Oh okay. Yeah I think it's under a hundred grand I a year see. so there sounds like go. a good deal. Um, and you get Starbucks. Suzanne <laughs> you are very pleasant. I want to give you out your phone number one more quick time yes. here and it's a nine seven eight forty eight fifty four. Any yes. questions? for uh, Suzanne, any uh, educational consulting you might need, yes. give her a call. Absolutely. You're a great guest. Thank you. Hey, come back. You're very pleasant. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> All right. Suzanne Spradling, and she is an educational consultant on Monday. It'll be Dennis Hart talking about a lot of things, including the NBA Finals and much more. Have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday. country music, relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country, the only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2.